Okay, cool. Welcome. Thank you so much for joining us today. We're going to be doing a review on the film called From Underground to the Corridors of Power. My name is Catherine White and I'm a fourth year journalism student at Rhodes University. I specialize in TV journalism and I'm joined by a very good friend of mine from high school, Laura van der Valt. So both of us decided to actually go into the film industry and that's the direction that we both took. Laura is finishing her BA in Media Communication and Culture at Nelson Mandela University. She studied videography in Cape Town and she's worked in the film industry and she's trained students in video production. Um, she's been doing photography since high school, but she only started professional um, photography and videography after she did freelance work. So um, she also has her own photography and videography business trading as Lara Mock. So I'm quite excited to be having this discussion because neither of us have talked about the film and the impression that it's had on us yet. So this is the first time we'll be discussing it. Laura, um, yes. did you have any prior knowledge about the mining industry before watching this film? I think um, because I um, don't have any family in the mining industry and um, I just didn't have much exposure to it. I didn't have a lot of knowledge, I did, especially I knew about the um, terrible circumstances um, of mining in the apartheid years and I also know that it still is not um, good at present. Um, during the Marikana time I was yeah I was often reading the news um, and aware and updated about what was happening but like of late I have not been up to, up to date with things but yeah so I have a like a, a semi um, a semi good awareness but I, I'm not very like informed so that's yeah. where I stand. Yeah, same here. I was also very much aware of what was happening with the Marikana massacre, and that really uh, got to me emotionally. Um, mm -hmm. But it was only after really watching this film that I, um, I understood things a lot better, and I, um, and I got to understand the role that history played in shaping where we are today. So um, it was very informative for me extremely educational um, and I can tell you that when watching this film I made some notes it was four minutes into the film where I actually said aloud I said wow this is powerful I just thought to myself this is extremely powerful I mean even the opening line um, the opening sort of where they talk about the wages and how low the wages used to be so for yeah, 40 cents Yes, so 30 working days, this is not um, 30 a month, this is 30 working days, you would be paid 12 rand, and a pair of trousers would cost 14, that's two months work to buy a pair of trousers, so just the opening was an absolute shocker for me, and then 12 minutes into it, I got shivers, um, 16 minutes into it, I said, oh my goodness, 25 minutes into it, um, I was in absolute shock. I don't know if you remember the part where um, we saw all of these, all of those bodies. Um, yeah. Right at the beginning. And also the unidentified graves. That was just, um, yeah, that, that was, it was so real. Because for the first time, after everything we've been hearing about the mining industry, um, and even about the apartheid years, for the first time, it became extremely real because here are these pictures in front of us. Here are the stories from the leaders who led the struggle. Um, and it just really opened up my eyes. Yeah, I think for me, um, when it started, I, I was like, I actually didn't know entirely what the documentary was about. I decided to just go in blindly. And in hindsight, the title itself is so good. I mean, like from underground to corridors of power, it's um, literally people physically being underground, but also being underground regarding the struggle against apartheid um, and coming into power um, after um, the democratic elections. And I think 
we don't always realize we, we look, I think today um, unions, trade unions, especially have such a bad um, image in, in, in some people's eyes. And I think we look at Newman, we're like, oh, they cause so many issues. That's what people think. But if we look at the history and what they've served to do and how far they've brought the mining industry and and what they've done for people and and i mean like they um the fun that they provide for for children of mine workers it's it's like i looked at that and i was thinking okay this is the bigger picture and it was shocking to see what it came from why it had to happen the fact that that the fact that that's our hit that's part of our history and it's actually there's still that still actually continues um i mean we still have illegal mine workers working in excruciatingly bad circumstances and it is illegal but the fact is that they need to do that like uh, yeah just watching the film and then watching about um how these men had to go through such dehumanizing experiences as being examined by white doctors by a female white doctor and then this like you're, you're like a 20 year old guy and you're standing next to a 40 year old man who's your elder your senior and you're all naked and it's it, it was so I just, I don't understand how people can, like I, today I'm, I mean, I'm white Afrikaans. I come from a lineage of people that oppressed. Um, and and yet I, I think, how do you get to that point where you consider someone as just a tool, as just something to be exploited, not a person. That person looks exactly like you do. Their skin is just a different color. And I was just like, what on earth? That's just so evil. That is evil. And the fact that so many people of, of like my um, ancestry were part of that. It's, you know, watching this film, besides just that fact, if I was totally removed from it, I would still have been shocked. Um, and yeah, I, I just watching it, I, I was almost crying. <laughs> I wasn't crying because I think it was just, it, I think I was past the fact of crying. It was just like, was a little bit overwhelming for me as well yeah I feel like it was important it's important for yes. for particularly um, I think white South Africans who don't know the history and I don't know if everyone even those who do know the history if they really know the depth of the history um, and just going back to what you were saying about the title from underground to the corridors of power yeah what an absolute uh, winner it was such yeah. a winner because um, when I look at our president now, I see him in different eyes. I didn't yeah. know. I genuinely yeah. did not know um, the role that he played in the struggle. I didn't understand um, that it had such a big impact. So, um, yeah, it was an absolute eye opener in terms of the leadership and um, also perhaps the symbolism that NUM um, played in the ANC's um, reign to power, in the ANC yeah. becoming what it is, because NUM was truly the um, Fakbond union. Yeah. It was yeah. truly the union that was the, at a stage the fastest growing union in the world. It's the largest union in South Africa, and it really did unite. And that showed us that there's power in numbers. And that yeah. had a big impact on how the ANC government, um, how the ANC party was formed. Yeah, I think with the, just looking at, uh, as you said, it, it was the fastest growing union in the world, and it, it really had such a big impact. But I think something that they kept mentioning was that each of the different parties so the the employers or the uh, um yeah no, the the mine mining industry and then the union they under um their their expectations of each other were you know they had a bit of like <laughs> what is the word i'm just Anyway, they, they had low expectations of what the, ne the other party would do. And so the mine industry, I, I was just amazed at how these guys were like, you know what, we are willing to die. I, like, it, we will do this and we will die together. And I think they had the bigger vision of saying, because the people that come after us, it's like, it's not just me, my work. It's not just about me getting fired or something, but it's the men 
and the women that come after me, like I need to fight for, for their rights and, and how the mine industry was like, okay, fine, we'll just buy you all. Um, and even today, there's such a discrepancy between the work that's being done and the income that the higher ups get. And I think just watching this, I realized this struggle is far from over. Um, we still have, we still have that. And it was very fascinating just to see how like they were showing, I loved seeing the footage from the apartheid era. I just, I really appreciate it. Like I know how hard it is to get archive footage. So to see how beautifully and seamlessly they wove this in and even with music and audio tracks from that time, it was, it was really striking and it were, it was more powerful in that way because they showed, they didn't just tell. Mm-hmm. Um, so it was like, they took us through that journey and seeing how like a white artisan would be working in the mine and then the black guy sitting next to him. And you could clearly see, even in just what they wore, how they were placed on different levels and how the economic barrier was there between them and even just the respect. Um, like I remember there was a scene where the men were put into like the elevator thing for the shaft and this white guy closes that thing. And it was as if these guys are putting into a jail, like just, and it was so, so hard hitting that moment. Like they, I felt like that was exactly what this is. These men are forced actually to work like this away from homes. And today we have an, a, a huge national issue of fatherlessness and um, disrupted families because of that era. And that was caused by apartheid, by the government and, and the by these miners. And the, the hostile environment that these mine workers were placed in. And what I also yeah. found very interesting was how the past laws seem to have actually originated from the mining yes. industry. And, what, mm. and what's particularly fascinating about that is that we can still see that what was hoped to achieve in Marikana has not yet been realized. They were, yeah. pro- you know, they were really, um, yes, it was an illegal protest, um, but what they really wanted was a, a living wage, um, a live out wage. So they didn't have yes. to stay in that, um, in those hostels anymore. And I mean, those are, it seems as those are massive hostels with um, yeah. hundreds of thousands of people um, staying in them. And I can't imagine not having that family um, upbringing. And I guess it's fantastic that the initiative that you mentioned, I can't remember what the scholarship is called. I think it's JB something where, my, yes. And those mine workers, children then uh, have an opportunity to qualify yeah. for the scholarship or their dependents and they can go and get an education. And that footage was also priceless in terms of technicality. Um, you were talking about the archive footage in terms of the production team, the professional um, documentary that came out of yeah. South Africa, it makes me so incredibly proud um, because we're yeah. always comparing, you know, to, to Europe, um, mm. to the States, the US. Yes, yeah. to the, the big world out there. And we very often overlook our own work and our own um, crew and the skills that we have available in this country and the stories mm. that we can tell. And I think yep. this is an incredibly powerful story and it's an absolute eye opener to me. Yeah. 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 I think, um, I think I just really, when I, so I saw the archive footage and then comes the interview footage. Um, and it was so beautifully filmed and I found it fascinating that they didn't just do typical interview footage. Some of it they really did artistically and they shot it through bars and stuff. And that was, it was really cool, um, to see and, and that they, they really made such an effort to display these men with such honor, mm-hmm. men and women with such honor and um and creativity i think it it linked it all together beautifully and i noticed like the interviews they didn't shoot it in like light light places i mean there was one or two but it was generally they had this color scheme going through of dark um and and it was very very dark in the background so they weren't like backlit and and i think 
we often like we can watch a film and it, like a documentary you can watch it and we we don't really click the nuances in how the interviews are shot but even that little detail was so so good for me because I was like they are really weaving this together so that it is a film that that grips us visually and with its story. But I think one thing, I think a criticism that I would give was, I don't think they proofread the um, text on screen yes. um, because the narrator or the voiceover artist would read and then there would be different text. And I mean, that could be, you, you can justify that, but there were um, some grammar issues. <laughs> I'm very sensitive about grammar and, and spelling and stuff. And I think, um, for international audiences, that would be important. Um, and even South African audiences like to check that the English is is spot on there. I wonder, I wonder whether it, it could have been good to add, um, like whether they could translate the film or not, not even translate, but those, the text on screen that they had perhaps into, into languages in South Africa. Um, because I mean, you, I suppose their target audience isn't, necessarily South Africans I mean I guess it's South Africans but not just South Africans but I feel like there are South Africans who are not English who could actually really benefit from watching this um I'm not talking about Afrikaans people they can read the Afri like read the English but I mean other people who can who will feel that this honors our languages I don't know that might be a really irrelevant um I don't think that's thing. irrelevant at all I just feel as though um we have such deeply embedded socioeconomic issues that access to resources such as Wi-Fi, internet, data, um, yeah. data is extremely expensive in this country. And I love that this full this festival, just we're going a little bit off track. I love that the festival is free. It's fantastic. Yes. It's accessible. Uh, but you still need that internet connection. So if we could solve that issue as well. But I do like your idea of translating the film into other languages and you know maybe actually I, I feel like this is the kind of film that needs to be shown um, at schools and life orientation in history classes that's the kind of film I think we need to see more of I felt like I learned so much more from this than, than life orientation and, and history classes in in school I felt that the this film was, it, it, you, we have to note though, that it is slanted, the agenda is to um, support them. Um, you could tell like it's, it's slanted towards them. And I mean, I didn't have a problem with that because I mean, who, who does like, if, if it's a film, they need to choose an angle or they could have, you know, balanced it. And well, they did actually, let me just pause there. I think what was amazing was it towards the end, the leaders were like, you know, we did make these mistakes and we regret that. And they, I was fascinated because I think we face a country today where we have leaders who are so corrupt and often many of these leaders come from the struggle. Um, but a lot of people, they won't own up to the mistakes that they've made. And in this film, these men and women did. They were like, this was wrong. Not like about apartheid, like in, in the union itself, they were like, this was a mistake. In this case, we did wrong or we should have foreseen for this. And I really honored that. I thought that was, I think the film was so emotive, but it was sincere and vulnerable. And like with our president, President Soro Maposa, it made me see him in a different light. Like I knew that he'd been involved. I knew that he, he comes from a, a long history of being involved and really sacrificing his life, actually. And every person that they interviewed. And I, I was just... I love it. And I, I looked at these people and I, was, I thought, we, we see these leaders today and we just see them as leaders today. But I'm so honored. I feel so privileged to, to be under some of these men and women's leadership. Um, yes, there's a lot of corruption, but I actually almost understood why some things have happened mm -hmm. because of the amazing relationships that these people have come from. Like they were such a a tight knit group of people because they had to be. So I understand like why we have them as leaders today. Yeah. I really understand. And I don't think many South Africans don't. They like, oh, and that's a problem. I, I, I know that's a problem. Like, a lot of South Africans will say, yeah, these people from their apartheid years are not just our leaders because of that. Time. I'm like, exactly, exactly, because they saw what shouldn't be happening. Um, okay. So this film really illustrated that so poignantly for me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, did so, it, yeah. it was the, the footage of young 
Cyril Ramaphosa. I love yeah. that. I love that. Yeah, it was really cool. I mean, I I think um, seeing these these people operating during that time, the fact that there was footage, I loved it. I mean, um, seeing the archive footage and it became so real. Like, um, yeah, we can often read these articles about them, but now we see it. Yes. That was really, really. Can you imagine being part of that crew? Can you imagine? <sighs> to me, it's, it sounds like a dream because that this is the mm. kind of work that I would like to be able to produce yes. as, a, as a journalism, a TV journalism student in the hope to be a documentary mm. filmmaker. Um, yeah, exactly. I look at this work and I look at the overall uh, package that it produces, which is, in my opinion, and I'm very critical, I watch films and documentaries with a very critical eye and I pick up on continuity errors. Um, the overall package to me, sound was incredible. Yeah. The, the videography, I saw they had four um, directors of photography, fantastic. Um, the script itself, um, the power in the script and those creative elements, it, it was just magnificent. It was really, really a fantastic film. Um, I highly recommend that every South African watches this film. I think there's a little bit of um, violence because, I mean, we have to take into account that we have an extremely violent history. So, I would still say that I think it's important for school kids, for high school kids, to watch this. Yeah, high school. Yeah, I don't think no primary school would be a little bit <laughs> much, but but I highly recommend it. Absolutely. What are your thoughts? Yeah. Who do you like? Is there a yeah. audience that you think needs to watch this film? I think white South African youth, <laughs> but beyond that. Um, all South African youth should watch this. It's really, um, it's really cool to see that. And I think as well, international, international persons, this should really be seen by, by as many people as possible. And I think with that said, people in NUM, in, 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 the, in the union should watch this. I, I really hope that people do because to see the vision, to understand that this is, that why the unions exist is for the workers. Um, that's yeah that was crucial to see that that's the thing about unions they were meant to be there for the workers and to ensure equitable safe um healthy working environments and to provide for when people can't work anymore for their retirement and um for their children if if people work in such dangerous environments they need to be cared for um something that i also just realized is that we have still today we have a stigma against mine workers like i'll be very honest i have in my mind thought like we think oh one mine workers they're like low like they, that has been a thing in my mind that they like lower class and i've obviously that's been totally destroyed with time thankfully um like i don't think that anymore but that was an underlying thing like people who work in mines like you know that they just but it was they can't really do desperate, desperate people laura and those people didn't exactly. but, but that's what i'm saying i'm as i watch this i realize that these are people every person has dignity and that if as, and and i'm just i'm being really honest about like bias that was so deeply ingrained um and this isn't something that was like carried over from my parents i think it's just something in society um and and so as i watch this i realize that these were men who sacrificed so much so that they could work and earn uh, pittance, but also they are men of dignity. And these are, these are beautiful people um, who deserve honor. Every person does. And I, yeah, just as I was watching this, I think it really brought that to the forefront that these are men who are really yeah. working in terrible circumstances, but they are really artisans with what they do. Like I couldn't do that. And they're brave. Um, and, I, and even the women who, who went into um, mines and, and women who were clean. And today I, I realized, wow, this really broke a lot of the misunderstandings and just ignorance. I think it, it shattered ignorance for me. And I'm so grateful for that. Yeah. To me as well, it, it really 
highlighted the injustices of the past and it helped me understand you know, where we are, where we are today. And I, it seems to me like we still have a lot of work to do as a country, yeah. of course, um, as the union, as NUM themselves, um, there's still a lot of work that needs to be done. But watching this helped me understand where we are. And there's this question that um, some people have. When you ask a question and you say, well, what is this? And the response might be, well, even if you have the knowledge, what are you going to do with it? Are you going to change the circumstances? And I think that's a, that's a very, um, I don't think that's the right way to look at it. I think knowledge is power because the moment we can understand mm -hmm. what's happened, um, we, our, our mindsets change. We develop as a people, we develop as a society. And um, yeah, I do think that this kind of knowledge is particularly important, as you said, for the youth of South Africa. Um, I'd like to yeah. wrap things up. What are your final comments? I think just like, um, what you just said last, it's in this, this, piece of, this piece of knowledge is really crucial. I think because the film brought to light how integral Noom was with the ANC and how, um, because a lot of apartheid principles were first instituted in the mines mm -hmm. and, and how these functioned almost as concentration camps. Yes. They really, by putting um, the, like, a majority of men in, these, in the mines, they disabled, disabled um, um, the black majority at that time. They tried to, that's what I mean. They tried to disable them from, from uprising but they couldn't which is great um i'm so grateful for that that they were not able to do that and i agree this should be seen by more people i think i'm really excited for more documentaries like this to come out and i'm really really grateful for the encounters from festival and i mean despite COVID, it's um that they've continued and that it's available freely it's it's great mm. yeah. thank you <laughs> And then also just a, a final sort of comment from my side, just something that you've touched on now. Um, and this ties back in with um, NUM and the ANC and how integral NUM was in playing that role in um, empowering the ANC because they had the numbers, you know. And the slogan at NUM's fifth annual Congress in February um, 1987 held under a general state of emergency. So when the government declared that general state of emergency, that was mm. the year mine workers take control. That was their slogan, the year mine workers take control. And um, this mirrored the ANC's 1987 statement, which was the year of advance to people's power. Wow. <laughs> Wow, just getting that information from this documentary, um, you know, was, it was fantastic for anyone to just really understand the movement of the ANC and how they got to where they are, how we got to where we are. So with yeah. that, um, highly recommend this film. Um, thank you for joining me, Laura. This was a really interesting discussion. I feel like we could carry on and on and on but maybe we should do that offline. <laughs> Thank you for having me.